monthly meeting. Today is March 15th, 2022. Uh, first item on the agenda is public comment, period. Vicki, did anybody sign up to speak? No. Okay, no speakers this morning. Next item on the agenda is the review and approval of the minutes from our February 15th meeting. Chair will entertain a motion on our minutes. Got a motion from Joe in a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the review of our financial statements. Chair. Good morning, Katrina. How are you this morning? Good morning, Councilman Lewis, board members, and visitors. I'm presenting the financial <laughs> of February 2020. The beginning cash for February 1st, 2022 is $4,387,799. Significant receipts. Uh, we received a payment from Vanguard Landing for uh, the loan payment of $114,016. Uh, there was $10,000 uh, for Beach Fellowship Church um, land purchase deposit uh, and corporate landing development. Uh, the $4,080 was for um, YMCA bond fee, and $26,100 uh, was for also bond fee from Centera Health. And then we had interest of 675000 which is the a bank interest income. I think you added a couple of zeros. 675. <laughs> we'll take 675000 <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> That's great <laughs> interest. $675, I'm sorry, um, for the bank interest um, for this uh, February period. Significant uh, cash disbursements. Uh, we have uh, $41,525 for Kim Warren, and that's for the Corporate Landing Northeast uh, Design Stone Water. $48,755 for Kim Warren again for the Southwest uh, Design of uh, Storm Water. Then we had a payment for BHD uh, for the uh, access roads and utility designs uh, for the Corporate Landing and as well as the uh, significant disbursements of Kimberly Horn for Southwest Design that's on order again for uh, 37900 Giving us an end of <laughs> cash balance for February 28, 2022, $4,818,641. Uh, moving into incentive and initiative uh, account summary for February 2022. Uh, the beginning cash balance for February 1st of uh, 2022 was $3,563,462. Significant <clears throat> cash, $20,000 for refund for property acquisitions for a dome site project. And then, of course, $384 for banking uh, income interest. Significant disbursements, we have the lunch revenue, too, which is $10,693, and that's for the rent for the bio. Accelerator, uh, $52,456 is Cooper Carry, um, and that's for the dome site, and that's reimbursable. Um, in we have $17,664, uh, and that's also uh, dome site reimbursable uh, expenses. $31,199 uh, for Singer Davis, and that's legal services as dome site and then the 7890 for January's legal service dome site. Um, also, we have a significant cash disbursement uh, for the facility logics of, for January bio management of $5,500, leaving us an ending balance for February 28, 2022, $3,461,911. Um, you will see the incentive ca um, account summary for February 2022. Uh, the ending cash held by the VA 
Plus the EDIP and other reimbursables, um, which is $6,463,140. Less the payables and commitments, $7,345,468. Ending uh, the EDIP for it, available funding, $2,500,000. $579,583. Um, and I've inserted um, another slide which gives you a little more detail. Um, if you're going to remember from the last uh, period that I reported, we had the beginning EDIP grant available fund of uh, $2,899,218. Plus, uh, we closed uh, $277,407 of uh, grants this month. And new grants for February, we did not have any approved or awarded. Um, we also had to add in the APZ um, 1, which is the um, EDIP grant part C. 400, and that's a commitment of $451,177. Less the EDIP payments made for this period, which is um, $142,865, giving us an ending EDIP grant available fund, which um, I showed on the previous page of $2,579,583. Okay. Um, just to uh, let you know, we have on Part A EDIPs, um, we have 30. Uh, awarded grants available at $6,711,500. That's um, remaining for the award. Uh, we started out with, um, for Part A, um, we started out with 247 grants total, and so now we're down to 30. Um, part B, uh, we had um, originally um, 10 grants awarded. Now we're down to three. Available the funds are uh, $1,482,581. And then, of course, Part C. Uh, we had um, 14, we had 14 grants, but now we're down to um, 10 uh, grants left, which uh, gives us a remaining award available of $520,000. Um, so, during the time, um, we have, um, within the last month or period since we've met, uh, we did our uh, EDIP process training uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, and that was segment one. Um, we also are, within the next couple of weeks, doing um, our staff is doing the EDIP uh, process training for seg segment two. Uh, that will be coming up. Um, and just to let you all know about the receivables, I uh, received the check uh, yesterday uh, recouping all of the receivables that was shown on uh, the page for the incentive, sum the summary of the incentives. So we received the check and that will reflect in our cash in March. Okay, so we, uh, the city did reimburse us for that. Okay, and that's um, all that I have for today. All right, any questions for Katrina? Thank you so much for getting all of that straight. The next item on the agenda is a uh, request for approval of a resolution uh, regarding the terms of a uh, land bond. This relates to a bond issue from 2018 and Benjamin Wills from Hoffman and Knowles here at the Bond Council to tell you all about it. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the authority. My name is Ben Wills. I'm an attorney with Kaufman and Knowles. We serve as bond counsel to Virginia Wesleyan University. In 2018, the authority issued a funding bond on the university's behalf to fund various capital projects at its campus, along with refunding some of its prior debt. Um, that bond was purchased by Town Bank, who served as lender in the transaction. And Town Bank and the university have agreed to 
lower the interest rate on the bond, and that's why we're here today. So before you, you have a copy of our proposed resolution in addition to a modification to the bond purchase agreement, which was the document that Town Bank bought the bond with in 2018, along with an allonge to the bond, which actually affects the change in the interest rate, which will be reduced and set for the life of the bond through maturity. Um, very quickly, I'll go over the resolution. It provides background on the transaction. It talks about what we're trying to do here today. It authorizes the chair and the vice chair to uh, execute the modification agreement along with the allonge. It authorizes the secretary and the assistant secretary to affix the authority seal on the allonge and to generally take any other actions that are necessary to affect the transaction. Um, with that, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's going to save the university some money in that service and it'll provide some uh, security for the lender with respect to potential interest rate risks in the future. So happy to answer any questions that anyone may have about the transaction. Thank you. Any questions? And uh, we've reviewed all the documents and they're completely in order. Thank you, Alex. Um, all right, if there are no further questions, the chair will entertain a motion on the request for uh, approval of the uh, resolution modifying those bond terms. Madam Chairman, abstain from the vote. Okay, we have one abstention. An abstention or a motion? Motion. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Second. We've got a vote. <laughs> We've got a It's uh, springing forward. It's got us all. We've got a motion for Mike and a second from Zero. All in favor uh, with the abstention, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank you very much. The next item uh, before us on the agenda is a request for approval of a resolution authorizing the execution of a work order with the Navy. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Members of the authority, Councilman Jones. Uh, I'd like to present to you uh, the work order for the ITSA uh, project that you signed several months ago that were involved with the Navy on. Uh, just a, a couple of uh, overviews of the scope uh, they're seeking uh, to leverage their underutilized uh, property uh, as we went over uh, previously. It plans to enter into a long-term lease agreement with companies interested in utilizing their land. Uh, the Navy would benefit for uh, the rental income to be able to uh, upgrade and upfit some of their facilities there and meet their financial demands of their facility. Uh, also, this particular project would increase compatible use uh, around the Oceana area uh, for our business community. And uh, the uh, term uh, of the IGSA is for one year. Uh, for up to $100,000 with uh, nine one-year extensions. Um, as you see here uh, from the chart, uh, Oceana, and, you know, there, there's a lot of land around it available, uh, over 1,000 uh, acres altogether, and that's what we're uh, assisting them with uh, in the marketing uh, of this particular property. Uh, on work order number one that we're here to talk about today, uh, they're mainly concentrating on the former horse stables area. Many of you are familiar with that area. That's uh, parallel to Gianna Boulevard. It's about 140 acres uh, there. In the uh, work order number one, basically, uh, they've asked us to help design and launch a website. Uh, in addition, uh, they're going to have an industry day that we've been working with. Uh, Leticia and I and uh, a group of staff have been working on this. It's tentatively planned for April 20th right now. And, uh, so there's the two main aspects of uh, this particular uh, work order. And uh, they will provide up to $25,000 that will reimburse uh, us uh, for activities and expenses uh, related to this. I'll um, also uh, mention that on work order number two, uh, we're starting to discuss that, and a uh, master developer plan uh, is something that they're looking into, so that could be a follow-up to this. Uh, again, we should have that information back to you in the not-too-distant future. On this uh, work order number one, we request uh, from the authority approval of resolution authorizing execution of a 
$25,000 work order consistent with the IGSA between the authority and the U.S. Navy for future-based design. At this time, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Does anybody have any questions for Ray? Ray, you mentioned um, a master development plan. I know that I had talked to Alex and staff about the fact that originally um, part of the whole project would have included a study to determine what would be, what types of industry we could try to attract and what type of development would be best in that thousand acres. Um, is, is that what you mean by a master developer plan or uh, is there still the opportunity to go back to the Navy to see if they would either contribute to a study, uh, uh, contribute funding to a study or allow us to do a study as part of this MOU so that we could figure out from the city standpoint what would be the best uh, potential use of those properties? Well, uh, I think that's uh, to be determined. Taylor may have watched some additional insights on that question. Madam Chair, thank you for the question. And so um, there are really two tracks that can be taken as it relates to, uh, to this type of program. One is, is uh, would be the, the parcel by parcel approach, which, um, which Ray has spoken about here today and which is, which is sort of what we originally contemplated with the uh, Intergovernmental Services Agreement that we've adopted today. It is it is likely, and I don't, I don't want to get ahead of other conversations that we're having, that there is a more there is a more holistic approach that we could take. That would likely require either amendment to our um, existing IGSA, or it might be most efficient to just have have a second document where the two sort of ran concurrently, and we just picked the model that that worked best based on what we saw there. The conversations around the second document have begun. They're not ripe yet, but if we could, if you can give us about 30 days on that, we think we can have something uh, um, something ready to bring forward. That said, what Ray has got got here for us today is a, a first important step and milestone in the work that we have done done to date with the Navy. Um, the Navy is quite keen to have this industry day, and so uh, in our uh, we would request that you allow us to move forward with, um, on this track as it's already been contemplated while we continue to do research on ensuring that we deliver the best value to both the Navy and the community. That sounds good. Um, when is the industry day? It's, uh, it's already scheduled for April 20th, the morning of April 20th. Uh, right now it looks like it's going to be at the uh, Beach Convention Center and uh, with a follow-up tour of the horse stable area. And why they chose that area is uh, together we looked at all the available uh, properties there. Uh, they would like to have uh, a quick win to get this uh, whole program out of the gate. And since that's very accessible and close to infrastructure on Oceana Boulevard, they, uh, we both uh, felt that that would be a good place to start to get the program kicked off. And how many acres is the horse stables? Uh, around 140. Pretty, pretty good size. And how are we advertising that? Uh, basically, uh, we've uh, got mass mailings that are going out to the various uh, communities that would be interested, the broker community, some of the professional associations, H.R. Acre and others, uh, and uh, also the development community. Uh, we're sending uh, letters out to them, too. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ray. Any other questions? Uh, the chair will entertain a motion on the request for approval of a resolution authorizing the execution of a $25,000 work order consistent with the IGSA. A motion from Penny. Second. And a second. Presenter. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Oh, that was David. Uh, all opposed? Same sign. That motion carries. Thank you, Ray. Next item on today's agenda is request for approval of a resolution for our facade improvement grants. Madam Chair, members of VB Day, I am um, Emily Archer. I'm a project management um, manager here at uh, Economic Development. Um, you may remember this program from last year. It used to be known as the District Improvement Program, the DIP. 
this year it's been um, reconfigured a little bit and rebranded as the FIG, the Facade Improvement Grant Program. Some of the images you are seeing are work done uh, last year under the DIP program. Um, Forbes Candy at the Ocean Front. Uh, this is a matching grant program. It provides more support for small, locally owned businesses. We um, define small as 50 employees or less. Um, last year, the district improvement program, the business had to be located in a SGA or any business district, uh, special economic growth area. This year, we just opened it up to any commercially or industrially zoned property. So, try to make it as accessible as possible. Um, last year, you know, improvements could have been modernization of any kind, but this year we're really focused on exterior improvements that are visible from the um, the public spaces around them. <coughs> so more like a traditional facade improvement program. Um, we had a budget of $100,000. Um, request anywhere from $10,000. Um, but the, we actually had some unspent funds from last year's program that the Grant Review Committee is recommending um, we roll into this year to get that money out the door. This is a kind of just a summary slide of the grants from last year. So you can see where the um, excess came from. We had a few that um, had some slight issues and weren't able to take advantage of it. Um, and some came in a little bit less than they were awarded for. But I would like to point out the bottom, you can't see in the bottom box, we uh, awarded $66,312 last year. But the actual private investment was more, instead of a matching grant, it was $201,853, which is a three to one return on investment for this program. Next slide, please. Um, so this year we had a 38 total applications. It was open for five weeks between January 18th and February 22nd. Um, all over the city, as you can see, um, the little dots represent the applications that came in. Um, we did a first cut kind of ranking of just by completeness of application, the eligibility of the business, the eligibility of improvements, and um, they got a bonus point if they were a small woman uh, or woman or minority owned or veteran owned business. Um, the grant review committee consisted of uh, VBDA members, um, planning, uh, planning, economic development, city manager's office, uh, convened <coughs> last week to make the recommendations that you see here today. Um, first 15 um, here today, totaling $104,388 in grants. Uh, so the 15 here today, um, I'll take you through. You can see about half are at the ocean front, which is. Um, similar to what we received last year. Next. So I have a slide for each one of them. I'll let you read the disclosures as we go and just kind of give you an overview. This is for uh, Ava Maria Salon Spa at 860 Laskin Road. Um, they are adding two new exterior signage and awnings to the facade of their business. Um, we recommend a grant of $2,393. This is Bark. Uh, Pups and Pints, this recently went, um, received a conditional use permit from City Council on March 1st. It's a new business that um, is a doggy daycare and craft brewery. Um, it's the, the side improvements to reconstruct the storefront and windows, um, es estimated investment over $20,000 for a grant recommendation of $10,000. Davis Advertising, Davis Ad Agency, is um, on Pacific Avenue, 3200, and it's to install two new visible signs, a monument sign and a wall sign um, alongside Lisa um, on Pacific Avenue, um, with a grant recommendation of $3,853. Um, a touch of class catering, also known as Grand Affairs Catering, at uh, 2036 Pleasure House Road. The project's to install a fence line, you can see the red line, around the back of their property, the existing ones are deteriorated. Um, with a grant recommendation of $5,606. Uh, Jars of Dust Studio, this is an uh, outgrowth of the buy business, a powder studio, um, in a new location just south on 15th Street. Um, and they've taken over an old industrial building to replace all the windows you can see are in poor um, condition. For a grant recommendation of $7,740. Uh, Jim White Fitness and Nutrition, it's a fence project um, to um, screen and increase safety of the property for a grant recommendation of $4,610. Um, this is a Sunoco station at 2900 Shore Drive. Um, you can see the existing curves and the pumps, uh, the pumps are um, deteriorated and they like to install a new, uh, 
metal curbs and bollards uh, for a grant recommendation of ten thousand um, dollars. The Cuddy Shark Motel and Cottages. The cottages um, need some uh, exterior repairs, uh, painting, and roof repairs um, for a grant recommendation of five thousand five hundred dollars. Um, Lost Planet at nine. 1930 Atlantic Avenue. Um, this used to be a Sensations facade. You can see in the part of the right. Um, it's a selfie um, experience store, so people can go in there and take cool pictures with crazy backdrops. They have a giant gorilla that'll be out over the facade. You can see on the right that um, proposed facade improvements for a grant recommendation of $5,068. Maze Parlor at 2700 um, 2708 Pacific Avenue. Um, so this is a proposed um, image of the cafe improvements out front. So an arbor, some overhead structures and lighting um, for a grant recommendation of $4,533. Um, a Mizuno Japanese restaurant. This is also at um, 1860 Raskin Road in Hilltop. Um, projects to construct an entry vesti vestibule um, around the facade on the right for a grant recommendation of $6,640. Sweet spot at uh, 5216 Providence Road. Um, you can see the former building they are renovating, um, but this will be for exterior seating with shade um, and some dining pods uh, for a grant recommendation of $10,000. Um, Eleven S's, fresh table and bar, they're taking over from the Home Republic spot at 3328 Laskin Road. Um, to install some new garage roll-up doors, um, expand the outdoor seating, and a walk-up pickup window. Grant re recommendation of $10,000. Two more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Young Boys at 1700 Atlantic Avenue. Um, they have a, had a temporary cafe, but this is to um, construct a permanent franchise cafe at the sidewalk corner there. Um, the seating and uh, integrated planners into the railing for a grant recommendation of $8,445. And uh, Waves Motel Inc., which is a, a commercial parking lot on a formerly vacant lot at 1312 Atlantic Avenue. Um, you can see the parking lot's underway, but they still have like lighting and landscape to do with the estimated remaining investment of over $200,000 for a grant recommendation of $10,000. Any questions? All right, any questions? Doesn't sound like it. Um, how many more of these do you have in the queue? So the grant review committee um, approved 19, so four more hopefully next month will be it. Okay. And that will that take up the rest of the funding for the yes. program? Mm -hmm. and, and we like this. We love this program because this allows us to afford what is a relatively small amount of money for the development authority and um, provide support to. Um, to small businesses in our community um, that would likely never qualify for formal investment or for EIPs or sort of location incentives. I uh, really want to commend Kathy and Emily for building out this program because, again, it does, it really allows us to get to a level of business that we, that we does, is, will likely never be investing in, but also, I mean, to these businesses, these investments um, provide real support and uh, it really makes people happy. So it's. Mm -hmm. Thank you for thank you for your consideration. Well, and it's an investment that the public can see, right? Because it's right. a facade improvement. So it's, I think it's a great program. Appreciate all of your work on it. And with that, the chair will entertain a motion on the request for approval of the. We'll vote on the 15 grant requests at the same time. Motion to approve. Got a motion. Aye. And a second, for Mr. Strange. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank you very much. The next item on today's agenda is the request for approval of a sublease for our office space here in the building. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Today uh, we're here to talk about Corral Services um, and our international incubator. Here's the disclosures for Corral Services and then. Uh, Corel Services, uh, they're a UK company. They're established in 2014. They have 143 employees. Um, we met them in 2021 during a UK marketing mission. Um, they visited last month, and they're a global leader in engineering installation of land and subsea cables for the offshore wind industry. 
They have experience in 142 projects, all in the UK, Taiwan, France, and then most recently the Seabell project here off the coast of Virginia Beach. Um, they're looking to establish their U.S. headquarters uh, immediately. They're looking for someone now uh, to be their uh, U.S. manager. Uh, they have requested to lease space in our international incubator. Um, when they visited us last month, they visited areas of Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, and New York, and they've... Um, as a reminder, uh, the, uh, the VBDA approved their first tenant of the international incubator, Course Intelligence, in September 2021. Um, the incubator is meant for companies that only need one or two offices to start their operations here in the U.S. Um, they're allowed to stay for a maximum of two years, and they also have access to a conference room, private entrance, and uh, the lease escalates every six months. So for the first six months, there's no rent, um, and then it goes up by 725 every month. And right now, the Development Authority pays $28.25 per square foot. Today we're asking for your approval of um, allowing Coral Services to lease one office in the National Incubator. Laura, with this lease, how much space do we have left in the International Incubator? Uh, one more space, okay. But the offices are fairly large, so I mean, several people can go into one office. So this is just meant for them when they come here. Don't, you know, we try to take all the questions off the table, just let's focus on getting new sales. And then once they grow their customer base, then the goal is obviously to have them grow here. It is, and that's, thank you, Laura, that, that's all I was going to say. That the goal is not to have the companies in the incubator for the full two years. The yeah. goal is to just help them get established here in our community, um, have the, make, ensure that they have a great experience coming to Virginia Beach, and then as soon as they're stable, we, uh, we, we start assisting them with finding the market. But I will tell you, we, again, uh, just want to commend the authority for, for being innovative and establishing this, this program because everywhere we go, um, you know, if, 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 imi if imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, everywhere we go, EDOs hear, that hear about this program are like, oh, I want to, we should do that too. <laughs> Not all of them can afford to do this, but uh, it's. Uh, but like I say, for us, this is having real success. And Laura, this is um, not just an offshore wind, but in general. How many companies have we had uh, locate either here or just establish an office present? Is it uh, from uh, from just the UK? Is it five now that have come, or something like that? Yeah, five, five in the la seven. You said. I, I think so. About five. five yeah, but, uh, in 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 the last uh, during the pandemic in the last year, we've had. We've had five, five international companies establish a presence here in Virginia Beach, and, um, and this, this program is a core part of that success. So thank you all. And it's nice because when they have questions, it's well across the map. Great way to get them into our community. Thank you. Good, good program. All right, any other questions for Laura? I'll entertain a motion on the request to approve this sublease. Got a motion to approve in a second. Great. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a bioaccelerator update. Devin. No, great. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the authority, and Councilman Jones. Here today to talk about our bioaccelerator update. You go to the next slide. So last week I was actually doing some international marketing and we um, have quite some up good updates and good leads that have come through it. So we have renewed our membership with Oxford Bio Network. So as a part of that, we will be attending Bio Trinity in April. And we have partnered with them to also include offering um, virtual membership to just Oxford Bio Network members at no cost. So what that virtual membership does, it gives them a US address. We're just trying to gain some traction and just show that we're here. We hear a lot of, you know, your typical Bostons and whatnot, but we want to show them that Virginia Beach and Virginia can be where they can land. Last week we met with Asibio, that is our um, cluster network in Spain, and we're looking at some new partnerships that they're able to connect us to other clusters. Um, so they are where we visit with um, Bio Spain that I went this past fall that also included um, creating a new partnership with a cluster called Bioga. 
as part of our the mission last week, we actually met with their incubator, the Bio, Bioga incubator that's partnered with the university in Galicia. And so that incubator feeds the companies into Bioga, and then we're working with some of the companies there. So after this was already sent to you all, we have since had two leads from that marketing mission already come through. One from that Bioga cluster network that we've been meeting with, and then one that actually will be looking to visit us here in the next two weeks. They'll be in the States and they're gonna make another trip down here to visit us. And then, so we have had three interested tenants, so two are in the preliminary stages. We can add two more to that as well, and possibly three more. We are working with a local company that's potentially looking to um, create some samples for a new product line. So we're getting the traction all of a sudden rather quickly. You can go to the next slide. So the one big potential planet, uh, tenant that has come through is a local Virginia Beach startup company. They actually are in the hemp and cannabis testing industry. Um, these are their certifications that they will need to get. And when you see that ISO slash IEC, there are two labs that are accredited by that. So that accreditation would um, make the company um, they have to be on target with their guidelines and within the um, certifications, and they would have drop-in visits, so they have to make sure they're always on. They are looking to rent two labs from us for two years and then help them grow from there. They're starting with the cannabis, I'm sorry, the hemp industry first, so our hemp farmers, and then they can help with the medical cannabis industry and then be on the forefront as we look at, in the next few years, the recreational cannabis use. So that is our big update from uh, our accelerator. Any questions? Great. Any questions for Devin? How quickly do you think these will start to percolate? So what we're, um, our goal for this tenant lock labs that I just showed you um, is an April 1st deadline. We are working through the due diligence of reviewing their business plan and such. The other company would be just an office space. We're still looking. Um, for some more information from them. Uh, the international companies, we are looking at some virtual memberships to start with. Like I said, we have one already visiting in the next two weeks, um, and we'll take them to the lab. So hopefully in the next, next month, I'll have a tenant that I can say, here we are, we have one. Um, but we're slowly getting some more traction with it. That's great. All right, any other questions? All right, thank you for the update. Next item on today's agenda has to do with our business parks. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the authority. Today's an exciting day. We've got uh, a couple of projects, uh, land sale proposals for our corporate landing park that will help us achieve the objective of building that park out and moving on to other, other opportunities that we deem appropriate. Uh, but first of all, I'd like to introduce Marty Cochran of Forbes Candies, which is our first project. Uh, we've been working with Marty now about two years, plus or minus, uh, to get to this point. It's been a uh, long road, but we've uh, mutually decided that corporate landing is a place that Forbes Candies' future uh, should be. Um, with a, uh, a great project, and we're keeping a storied name and brand within the city of Virginia Beach, which, by the way, Marty, you give us free advertising every time you sell a box of your candy. It says Virginia Beach for two months. So we appreciate that very much. Would you like to share anything? Yeah, if, if I could just have a couple minutes to come up, or? Well, yeah, we'll come on. He's on camera if you go to the podium. Oh, I won't take up too much of y'all's time. I appreciate everybody. Good morning. Um, I, I did want to uh, just have a had a couple things to say. I just wanted to thank the, the economic development Charlie and Hassan for for getting us to this point. It's been, as you said, it's been a couple years in the making. Specifically, I guess in the last year, we've really started, you know, going down the path of trying to get to where we are now. And and it has been a long journey. But I know they've they spent a lot of time on it, a lot of energy on it. I just wanted to, you know, give a a, a shout out to them for, you know getting us to this point. Um, you know, moving forward, Forbes Candy is really excited to be here. You know, you know, I think probably a lot of you guys have been around the city for a long time and just kind of 
recognize Forbes as you know as the as the slideshow before just on Atlantic Avenue, but we're what we're a lot more than that now. You know, we're not the, the, the gift shop on Atlantic Avenue, although we've been there, you know, for 90 years up to this point. You know, so I think we're one of the low, the, the longest tenured retailers on Atlantic Avenue, but. You know, we're selling candy up and down the East Coast, anywhere from Maine to the Keys. You know, we've been doing that for years, and now we've expanded all over the country. So, um, you know, we're, we're shipping from here to, to California, and we're really becoming not just a regional candy supplier, but a, a national candy supplier. Um, in the next couple of months, we'll be shipping up to Canada, so we're starting to export. Um, and, you know, by the end of the year, we're expecting to be in Europe and Australia shipping to some, some major chains and the um, international community. So Forbes Kansas is excited to, to hopefully be in Virginia Beach for the next 92 years and um, appreciate everybody's help and, and compliments. That's impressive. How much would you say your uh, e-commerce business has grown through the pandemic? Were you um, we've been so focused. We haven't done a whole lot. It's grown a little bit, but it's not been it's not been tremendous. We've been more focused on uh, selling to distributors, C stores, uh, grocery stores. This year, we, we got into Wegmans, so we'll be in all the Wegmans on the um, um, you know all the Wegmans. Uh, so it's really kind of not been so much of a focus on the e-commerce piece of it. Uh, more so, just trying to get out to other distributors, Dollar Tree, you know. Um, some big players in the market, um, Ollie's, that type of national chains that can really give us the distribution, you know, instantly, pretty much. That's great. And how many employees do you have? Um, for our factory, we have about 45. Company while we have over 100. During the, it's seasonal, you know, just with the with the oceanfront and the Outer Banks locations. Great. Well, we're happy to have you and keep you here Absolutely. in Virginia Beach. We're excited. Thank you, Marty. Thank you. I appreciate you making most of the presentation. <laughs> I noticed no samples, though. Huh? <laughs> Everybody in this room, I think, at one time or another, has probably put a piece of Forbes candy in their mouth. If they haven't, then they're required to by the end of the day. <laughs> so seek some out. Uh, Again, as, as, we, as we talked about, uh, we, we refined our letter of intent over the, uh, the past year and closely here in the past months uh, to propose the sale of property um, in the park, about three and a half acres of property in corporate landing. Do you have a visual of that? Okay. This is in the southeastern part of the park. You can imagine. Off of uh, General Booth Boulevard, right here, Forbes Candies and Zero Point, which we'll talk about next, right next door to it. So it's in a great spot, a lot of visibility for both companies, uh, and a very desirable location. So these two, if you go back, these two projects have been. Uh, uh, a degree of difficulty in ensuring that they, both companies have the right access, especially for Forbes with some of their retail activity. This is the future road that's proposed in corporate landing at the corner of General Booth. <clears throat> this is a temporary access for both companies to go to construction. Fortunately, they've selected the same contractor that is going to create a lot of efficiencies we'll talk about in the next proposal. Again, uh, we're, we're proposing that we, we sell the property at 200,000 an acre. They, uh, the companies agreed to that. These are the terms. Uh, and we're well on our way in planning and engineering uh, to make this the new home of Forbes Candy. So we are recommending uh, that we move forward with the purchase agreement. And the two hundred thousand dollars an acre is in line with what we've been doing here recently. Two hundred thousand is the asking price. We went back and forth, and we finally settled uh, on the set price. Yes, that's correct. And, and Madam Chair, to, to just add to what to add to what Charlie just said, that two hundred thousand per acre is supported by the last three appraisals that we've had done in the park. 
important to note we are the comp for all of the other <laughs> for all of the other sales in the park. But nonetheless, that is a supported that value is supported by a number of appraisals. All right. Any questions for Charlie? <laughs> And this would be to move forward with the purchase agreement based on that the terms that you put on the slide. Mm -hmm. Questions? The chair will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Go ahead, Penny. Second. You got that one. Second. <laughs> Penny and then Taylor. I'm wrestle for it. First and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Or you're now the proud owner of new property in Coastal Landing Park. Soon to be. Soon to be, right? <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. There's no candy on the table. Well, no candy on the table. <laughs> Charlie, be sure that we got a sack of candy for the next week. <laughs> Uh, the next project, uh, which is complementary to the Forbes project in the same general vicinity as I pointed out, is a, a, again a local company, uh, Zero Point, which uh, is engaged uh, in the Navy contracting business, specifically in the special warfare community for supplying of certain products and uh, services, training, whatnot. Uh, they don't do a big job of advertising exactly what they do for the U.S. Navy in that sector, but nonetheless, they're, they've been growing in Virginia Beach for a number of years and will elect to keep their presence here in the community. Uh, specifically, the corporate landing site was very attractive to them given the you know, close proximity uh, to Dam Neck and other uh, military operations that are headquartered in that, that facility. Uh, again, we've gone back and forth uh, a couple of times with the letter of intent. Uh, we've settled on the 200000 an acre uh, price uh, for the property, um, which um, is up from their original offer. Um, it's about six, six point seven, six point, almost six acres of property um, in, right next door to Forbes. Uh, we're allowing for um, access for their operation off of the proposed road, and they'll use this as a temporary construction uh, access. They wanted their own entrance, uh, and it leaves the Forbes project intact and um, uh, allows for privacy as far as their clients coming and going. So again, uh, purchase price is 200 an acre, typical uh, uh, points in the agreement. Um, and it looks like we're going to be able to work with them to create the storm order, necessary storm order on the site to accommodate in a cost agreement um, structure that our city attorney has skillfully structed, constructed uh, in order to get to the agreement. And uh, Pincus is the uh, GC for both the companies, uh, which provides a, a lot of continuity and efficiencies as far as costs are concerned for both the companies and for us. So we're moving forward. Uh, ESON of our staff, our project managers, work closely with uh, both companies, their engineering firm and our engineer, to get to the place where we're ready to move on as soon as we can come to a signed agreement. So the recommendation is to move forward with the purchase agreement as presented and prepare a, a separate agreement for the cost participation action. All right, any questions for Charlie on this one? Charlie, you've got the map up there. How much land does that leave us in corporate landing that's not spoken for, so to speak? Yeah, um, well, we've, we've all talked about <laughs> selling property, but uh, go ahead. So. Madam Chair, that, that is buildable, effectively none. So, so this with um, we have we have one thing that we're going to talk about in closed session today. Um, but once once we're through that, what I would tell you is um, we'll be essentially able to report that after 35 years we've closed out the park. And so, just want to commend uh, 
commend uh, and 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 that's with considerable acceler acceleration over the last four years. And want to thank and commend this this authority for their commitment to growing our economy. And a considerable increase in the per acre price. I mean. uh, that, that's exactly right. So uh, we were we were we were at 125 flirting with 150 an acre. We've been at 200 an acre for the last three years, and and it's uh, um, still a highly marketable property and very desirable. And so. So uh, thank you all for all of, all of your help in sort of in sort of helping us close out the park. That's great. Thank you. We'll have other opportunities, just not in corporate landing, right? Say again. We'll have other opportunities, just not in corporate landing. That's <laughs> great. Great. Any other comments or questions? All right. With that, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the term sheet for zero point. Got a motion from Joe Strange and a second. Second. Second from Penny Morgan. All in favor say aye. Aye. <clears throat> All opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Two great new opportunities. All right. Uh, VBDA priorities. Any number, number 10. Oh, sorry. Very important. Missed it. Request for approval of land release of landscaping restriction, 1400 Air Rail Avenue. Alex is going to tell us about this. This one. is a very odd request. There's a document of record from 1975 that required the purchaser of the property off Miller's Door Road to install some landscaping within six months. That's all it says. It doesn't say they have to keep it. Um, the property is being sold. The purchaser is concerned blemish on the title and is asked to be released. Restriction. Was it a reversionary? No. I mean, what was the remedy if they did There is not. None. They just had to do it within, within, within the, the time frame which has long since passed. Well, it's, you know, the Carter administration. <laughs> it's been a while. So I, I would ask your support to. <laughs> it's really a clean up. This is a clean up, but clean up we have to vote on it. Title. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions <laughs> Alex on this one? They got the twigs. Yeah. All right. The chair will entertain a motion to release the landscaping restriction on 1400 Air Rail Avenue. Motion. Oh. The motion from Taylor. Second. And a second from Gunter. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Yeah, that's a good point. That's good. All right. Now administrative information. Uh, VBDA priorities. Any any comments from commissioners? All right, we'll kick it to Taylor. Okay. Um, so, thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to remind the community tomorrow is the mayor's annual State of the City address. Uh, very excited. Uh, a number of the announcements that, uh, that this authority has participated in over the last year will be highlighted, as well as some exciting things that are happening in the world of tourism. So, um, uh, as well as just, of course, I focus on the economy. The mayor will be talking about the whole community. The economy is the piece that matters most to me, but obviously, uh, um, Excited uh, that, that we're uh, for what we're going to hear from him tomorrow. Um, as you all know, the city council uh, just completed their annual retreat. We are now at the place where uh, where uh, we will complete a budget for their approval by by May 15th. What I can tell you is, uh, and and Katrina, thank you for the continued improvements that you're making in, in our in the reporting of our financials month over month. One thing to add, um, you saw our incentive account balance. This group has worked. Um, you all will remember three years ago, we had about a $30,000 balance in there and we're basically living year over year. You made a conscious decision to build that balance. We're now, so, and, and with instruction to us to, to basically participate in larger projects with the land that we had left. So as you just saw, we're, um, that balance is, is healthy at two and a half million. And just so that you all know, we, we can now, we now have a rough projection that'll, that'll, that will be advanced to council of what that, uh, of what our dedication to the cigarette tax to fund uh, will be this year. And it looks like it's going to be in the neighborhood. So, um, so we'll, so July one, we anticipate that you'll have two million on top of the half that we have built. So, so that, uh, I will tell you that incentives building, capacity building there is continuing to be healthy. Um, other than that, I just want to thank you. It's been a, been a busy meeting, but, uh, but thank you all for, uh, for your announcements. Thank you, Taylor and staff for bringing all those wonderful projects to us. Um, 
At this time, the chair will entertain a motion to recess into a closed session pursuant to the exemptions from open meetings allowed by Section 2.2-3711A, Code of Virginia, as amended for the following purposes. Publicly held property. Discussion or consideration of the acquisition of real property for a public purpose or of the disposition of publicly held real property where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A3, and contract negotiation, discussion of the award of a public contract involving the expenditure of public funds, including interviews of bidders or offerers, and discussion of the terms or scope of such contract, where discussion in an open session would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A30. And we'll have a voice roll call vote on that motion, Vicki. Oh, we need a motion, motion first, and then we'll have a roll call vote. Motion. Got a motion from Taylor Franco, Franklin. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Second. Second. And from Gunther. I won't even try your last name. Uh, <laughs> 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 you got the first name good. <laughs> Brown? Yes. Taylor Franklin? Yes. Annie Morgan? Yes. Lisa Murphy? Yes. Mike Standing? Yes. Joe Strange? Yeah. <laughs> Good to rise and seal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ye